Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. Today I'm comparing four 27 inch 1440p 240Hz OLED gaming monitors to see which is the best and which one is worth your hard earned cash. The four contenders are the LG 27GR95QE, the ASUS ROG Swift OLED PG27 AQDM, the Corsair Xenion 27 QHD240, and the Acer Predator X27U. I've extensively tested all four of these monitors, so I'll be giving some detailed, in-depth thoughts on how they compare. These four gaming monitors all use the same LG Display W OLED panel, which is 27 inches in size and packs a 2560 by 1440 resolution. All run the panel at up to the same maximum refresh rate of 240Hz and all support adaptive sync technologies. Some are branded as FreeSync, some are branded as G-Sync compatible, some have both, but at the end of the day, you will get perfect variable refresh rate support on all of these monitors, regardless of whether you are using an AMD or NVIDIA graphics card. Whether it's branded FreeSync or G-Sync has little to no difference for current generation products. Each of the four variants has a unique design, but all follow a similar sort of template, just swapping out various elements, like the stand, to fit that company's design language. The display section across all models has roughly the same bezel size across all four edges, so the part you'll be looking at most often is pretty much identical no matter which variant you choose. The rear of each monitor uses what I like to call the central box design, which is to say there is a central section housing all the display processing hardware, which the thin OLED panel extends out from. This is true of all four models, so all of them have a nice thin appearance to the edges. As for what it actually looks like, that's a personal preference thing. All are well-built models using mostly a dark plastic, the LG and ASUS models have RGB LED lighting on the rear, the Corsair and Acer models do not, but I think regardless of which way you choose, you'll be getting a monitor that looks pretty good. This is also true of the stands, really a much of a muchness as to which looks the best, and all of them support height, tilt, swivel, and pivot adjustment. I do think though that some designs are more functional than others. The LG and Corsair models both have ports that stick directly out from the rear panel, making them quite easy to access. The ASUS and Acer models have ports that point down. Bit of a minor difference, but I do like the easier to access ports on the LG and Corsair units. The port selection does differ across the four models. All have DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC, offering the full 1440p 240Hz experience. While all have two HDMI ports, only the LG model has the full HDMI 2.1 experience with 48 gigabits per second ports offering an unimpeded 1440p 240Hz. The Corsair is next best offering 24 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1, which for PC users will offer the same experience as the LG, but may not be quite as compatible with other devices. Meanwhile, the Acer and ASUS models are disappointing in that they only use HDMI 2.0, which limits the HDMI ports to just 144Hz instead of the full 240Hz. There are also some USB differences. Corsair and Acer are offering USB-C input with DP Alt mode, the Corsair with 65 watts of power delivery, the Acer with 90 watts, so both of these models are better for single cable laptop usage. Corsair also offer four USB-A ports in a hub, which is the most of any model, the other three have just two port Type-A hubs. On top of this, the Corsair and Acer models have a KVM switch built in, while the LG and ASUS do not. Three of the four models use a directional toggle to control the on-screen display, those being the Acer, Corsair, and ASUS variants. The LG model instead opts for a remote, omitting easy-to-use controls from the display housing itself, although there are limited controls available through the buttons on the unit. The Corsair variant also has a neat proximity sensor that pops up a handy guide on the screen so you can find where the OSD controls are easily. As for OSD features though, there's no real standout here. The range of gaming features is very similar across each model, although there are some color control differences I'll talk about throughout the rest of this comparison. All four variants use the same panel, and this includes the same use of a matte anti-glare coating. At the moment, there is no glossy variant on the market, but honestly, the matte finish is fine here. It works well for reducing mirror-like reflections in brighter environments, and it still preserves OLED black levels at other times. It is on the heavier side though, which some people may dislike, but again, it's the same on every model, so if you want this overall hardware package, you're stuck with it. 
Similarly, you're stuck with the RWBG subpixel layout on every model. Text rendering looks the same across the four, limited by this unusual layout, and ultimately I don't think any of these products are great for text clarity. And due to the use of OLED technology, every model is susceptible to permanent burn-in, so there's no variant here that is highly suited to productivity usage. I generally would not recommend any of these for desktop app usage with long periods of static content on screen, but all are perfectly fine for content consumption where the subpixel layout and burn-in concerns are non-issues. What is interesting to note is that Corsair are the only company to offer a burn-in warranty for their unit. LG, Asus, and Acer have all declined to cover burn-in as part of their warranty, so if you want the best peace of mind, Corsair are offering that. Motion performance is very similar between these four W OLED monitors, so if you are wondering about response times and motion clarity, there's really not much separating these models as they all use the same panel. The LG variant has a little more overshoot than the other three, but this is very difficult to spot outside of lower refresh rate gaming. The Corsair, Acer, and Asus models deliver effectively identical performance and all offer an outstanding experience for 240Hz refresh rate gaming. Simply put, speed is not going to be a deciding factor between the four variants. Similarly, input lag won't be a deciding factor because again, all four models deliver effectively the same experience, whether we're talking SDR or HDR latency. There's just a 0.2 millisecond difference in measured latency between best and worst, which is basically identical. I should also mention here that none of these models support black frame insertion, so there's no way to produce a strobed-like image for increased clarity. For color quality, as all use the same W OLED panel, we're faced with the same color space coverage, 97% DCI-P3 and about 72% Rec 2020. No differences here between the models. What does differ is factory calibration. Out of the box with no setting adjustments, the Acer and Corsair models are significantly more accurate for grayscale than the LG and Asus models. LG and Asus ship with a noticeable blue slash cold tint, whereas the other two variants get much closer to the accurate 6500K point for SDR sRGB content. This leads to much better Delta E's for the Acer and Corsair units. This does have a small impact for saturation too, but all four models do not ship with an sRGB clamp enabled by default, so they are all oversaturated to a similar degree. All four models also come with an sRGB mode. For grayscale Delta E's, the best model is the Corsair 27QHD240, followed by the Acer, LG, and Asus models all in a similar position. For color checker, we have the Acer model slightly superior to the Corsair, then a gap to the Asus variant, and another gap to the LG variant. So if you are planning on using this for SDR desktop usage, the Corsair and Acer variants are the ones to look at with a preference for the Corsair. With that said, all four models can be calibrated using software and doing so will deliver very similar results. The LG has an edge here in that it also supports hardware calibration through their PC app, although results from this aren't as good as a proper software calibration and it requires additional hardware, but it is a feature that's supported and unique to that model. One of the main differences between the four models is brightness, and this first appears when looking at SDR brightness. The ASUS PG27 AQDM is far and away the best model for desktop app usage in brighter environments, as it can reach a peak of 240 nits. Admittedly, it's not super amazing, but it's around 23% brighter than the LG model, which sits at 198 nits. Much worse than both of these models are the Acer and Corsair units, which only support 130 to 140 nits of brightness, making them not very suitable for people that like a bright monitor. For Acer, this is compounded by the inability to disable the automatic brightness limiter, which means that brightness will constantly change as you move around and resize desktop apps, which is very annoying. On the Corsair and Asus models, there is a setting you can enable called uniform brightness or something to that effect, which disables this behavior and restricts brightness to what you're seeing in the chart. The LG model has no ABL at all, instead permanently capping SDR brightness to around 200 nits. If you want to use your monitor in a super dark room with minimal levels of brightness, the Acer and LG models are the best, with the ASUS and Corsair also offering decent though not quite as good results. And as expected, all four models produce zero level blacks due to the use of OLED technology, leading to an effectively infinite contrast ratio, and all also have the same great viewing angles. For uniformity, there are no major differences between the various panels. The ASUS model was the most uniform for me, but only a minor difference to the other models. All also feature the same weird grey uniformity issues, where dark grey appears a bit dirty. This isn't a problem unique to one variant. All of them suffer from this, unfortunately. 
When it comes to HDR performance, all units feature the same inherent OLED qualities, so things like per pixel local dimming, zero level blacks, tight control over bright and dark areas, great shadow detail, all of those things are true across all four models. But there are some pretty big differences when it comes to HDR accuracy and brightness that are worth exploring. For starters, only the LG and ASUS models properly follow the HDR10PQ EOTF curve. You can see for both of these models, the grey measured performance line matches up perfectly with what is expected, the yellow line. The Acer model has raised brightness for some parts of its curve, while the Corsair model has some raised sections and some depressed sections. If you want HDR content to be displayed the most accurately on your screen, noting that this is much harder to calibrate than SDR, the LG and ASUS models are the best choices. Beyond this, there are differences to HDR brightness. Like with SDR content, the ASUS model is the brightest in HDR for full screen windows, pushing up to 196 nits. The other three models sit around 140 nits, giving ASUS a 40% advantage. This is also the case for 10% window brightness. The ASUS model hits 906 nits compared to around 665 nits for both the LG and Corsair models and 633 nits for the Acer variant. The end result is that the ASUS model is much brighter than its competitors for HDR content. We can see this difference laid out when looking at brightness versus window size. And it's not just in synthetic tests that the ASUS model is the brightest. This is also true while gaming. I recorded 850 nits in a real world gaming scene on the ASUS, compared to 616 nits on the Corsair, 591 nits on the Acer, and 585 nits on the LG. Again, this is around a 40% advantage to ASUS. The ASUS model isn't always brighter, but more often than not in our real world testing, this was the case. Some models also have some annoying quirks when it comes to HDR. For example, when switching between SDR and HDR modes, the Acer model requires you to change a setting in the OSD every single time for the best experience, when really these settings should switch automatically. If you're using the uniform brightness setting with the Corsair model, you'll need to turn that off manually when switching into the HDR mode again every time. Both the LG and ASUS models require firmware updates for the best experience, although all four variants support firmware updates. So I guess some of these things, especially for the Acer and Corsair models, could be addressed in a future update. Having looked at all four 27-inch 1440p 240Hz OLED gaming monitors in depth now, there's only a handful of differences between each unit. This is to be expected, they all use the same W OLED panel from LG Display, but there are enough differences to make a definitive call on which model is the best, at least in my opinion. So here's how I would rank these four models from worst to best. The least impressive variant is the Acer Predator X27U. It has the lowest peak brightness of the four models tested, the least accurate HDR presentation, and some annoying firmware quirks like the inability to disable the automatic brightness limiter and issues switching between HDR and SDR. At $1,000 US, it's also one of the more expensive variants, which makes it difficult to recommend right now. There are a couple of things that Acer have done well, like including 90 watts of power delivery over USB-C, which makes it the most laptop suitable model, and the built-in sRGB mode is quite well calibrated. But in my opinion, these features alone aren't enough to get a recommendation from me. I have the Corsair Xenion 27 QHD 240 in third position. Its brightness is similar to the Acer model, which is to say it's not very impressive, and it also suffers from some HDR accuracy issues, but it has fewer firmware quirks and the automatic brightness limiter can be disabled. It's the most well featured of the four models in terms of ports with HDMI 2.1, USB-C with 65 watts of power delivery and a four port USB hub. Its factory calibration for SDR content is also very good, well ahead of the LG and ASUS models. Perhaps the biggest unique feature in favour of the 27QHD 240 that might sway you is that Corsair are the only company offering burn-in coverage with their warranty. With the price recently coming down to $900 US, I think the Corsair model is worth considering. It's definitely not a bad offering, but I just can't put it any higher in my rankings. In second place, I have the LG 27GR95QE, which is probably only marginally ahead of the Corsair model. What the LG product does well relative to the Corsair is it offers a higher level of SDR brightness and better HDR accuracy, although overall HDR brightness is similar. 
It's the only one of the four models with full bandwidth 48 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1 ports, and it's the only to come with hardware calibration support. It's also competitively priced, sitting at $900 US regularly these days, with the occasional sale putting it down as low as $800. At that price, it's very hard to ignore. However, there are some trade-offs here that prevent the LG from being placed any higher. For example, it's not as well calibrated in the SDR mode as the Corsair or Acer variants, and it doesn't have a USB-C input or KVM switch. It has slightly more overshoot at lower refresh rates than the other models, but the big killer is overall brightness. The ASUS model really can't be matched in that area. And that brings me to the winner of this head-to-head -head battle, at least in my opinion, the ASUS ROG Swift OLED PG27AQDM. The main reason why I have this in the number one position is its much higher SDR and HDR brightness, combined with excellent HDR accuracy after a recent firmware update. The ASUS model is typically 30-40% to 40 brighter, which is a big deal for OLED monitors and gives it a notable lead over the other three displays, which are much closer together in the brightness they offer. This additional brightness may lead to faster panel degradation, so it's annoying ASUS don't provide burn-in coverage in their warranty, but if you use the monitor as intended for gaming or other content consumption, I don't expect this to be a big issue over a reasonable lifespan. The ASUS model doesn't have any major issues that would make me hesitant to recommend it, certainly not on the level of the Acer model's firmware frustrations, but it doesn't do everything better. For example, it only has HDMI 2.0 and no USB-C input, its SDR factory calibration isn't great either and lacks the hardware calibration feature of the LG, but at least to me these aren't deal breakers and don't outweigh the superior level of brightness. The biggest factor you'll have to weigh up is the price. ASUS are keeping this monitor priced at $1000 US, which is around $100 to $200 more expensive than the LG, depending on the day. In other regions, it's pretty common to see a 20% premium for the ASUS version over the LG, which definitely adds some competition to what would otherwise be a slam dunk victory for ASUS if they were all still at their $1000 MSRP. I think the ASUS model is worth the extra cost, especially if you're a high-end buyer, but if the 27GI95QE remains close to $800, that price is quite tempting. A $200 difference is quite a bit of money, so plenty to think about there for sure. Anyway, that's it for this comparison video between these four W OLED gaming monitors. If you want to learn more about any one of these individual products, we do have reviews for that over on the Monitors Unbox channel, which actually is this very channel. So you can watch all four of those reviews, get the full in-depth thoughts on each of them. The LG and ASUS monitors also have firmware update videos, which add a little bit to those reviews. A few extra things have happened with those firmware updates, so it's well worth checking out those updated videos as well, but those firmware updates were factored into this video, so should be the current performance you can expect from all of those products. If you are interested in buying one of these, links to those are in the description below. They'll give you updated pricing as well. And if you do want to support our independent testing and the Monitors Unbox channel, please do consider subscribing, going down in the description below, checking out our Discord, Patreon, or well, actually our Patreon and Floatplan accounts, which give you access to Discord if you want that as a feature. Um, yeah, lots of stuff down there. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.